Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Uh, it's a bit of a new thing this. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Jonathan here who is learning Toon Boom. So um, it's a bit more of a conversational format and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to follow along as he um, starts to rig, starts to put something together in Toon Boom. I'm going to be there to maybe answer a few questions, ask him how it's going. So hey, do you want to say hi Jonathan? Hello, everybody. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It's quite an honor to be here speaking to you right now, despite the, the current situation. But we'll have, a, we'll have a crack at it, shall we? Yeah, our, our pleasure. And yeah, and it's cool to just have somebody uh, who's, you know, an animator, but is, is learning the software because one of the things on the YouTube channel is obviously um, helpful kind of tips and things that maybe don't fit around the courses that we run. So um, after speaking to Jonathan, about um, you know graduating and then starting to to look to, well moving into and towards the animation industry uh, what would be useful is maybe to talk about those people who are learning the software so that those of you who are in a similar position out there could maybe gain something useful from this so Jonathan got in touch with me and said that um, he had uh, asked Sam Shaw who's a fantastic designer um, for uh, the permission to work with one of his designs and to to rig it and Sam was cool about it a cool kind of guy and he said no problem so that's what we're going to be working with and this is the Frankenstein rig is it Jonathan? Uh, yep yeah, it's a Frankenstein character quite a, a flat 2D design but um, I've had the privilege of rigging this character and it's it's brought on a lot of challenges being a, a 2D flat character there's there's a lot of intricacies that you have to sort of figure out and do a lot of problem solving. But um, no, it's it's been a it's been a really fun challenge and I've enjoyed it. So this is the rig so far. Uh, Jonathan sent me this earlier on. Jonathan, do you have a short version of your name, or do you prefer to be called Jonathan, the full mouthful? Uh, I'm pretty easy going. Most people just call me John since it's short, but um, okay. you can call me Jonathan, Johnny, just whatever you like. <laughs> Johnny John John. Okay, well, I'll go with John because I don't want to sound like a school teacher for too long. <laughs> so this rig, uh, the design is cool. I love the design. But this is your rig on the right hand side so yeah. far. Um, so first thing I noticed was I'm just going to pop this up here to give myself a bit more viewing space. Um, yeah, I noticed it's looking really nice, like structurally inside. This looks like a rig. Now to anybody who is new to rigging in Toon Boom and is like, is this the first video? This thing is crazy complicated already. Don't worry. Maybe we'll unpick it a little bit. Uh, maybe you could talk about it. Was it difficult to get to this stage? Because I, you must have also had this overwhelm when you first look at a rig and you see something like that and it makes you cry a little bit inside. Yeah, um, so I've, I've been using Toon Boom for about a year now. I'm uh, studying at UE in, in Bristol and I'm in my third year. When you first use the software of Toon Boom, you think, what on earth is this? You've got all these separate screens. It's kind of like a, almost just the interface is a sci-fi experiment. But as you use it more and more, you learn that the node view is so useful. With time, you, you sort of get to grips with it and it pays off so much. Because I think if you, if you open the timeline view, you'll see all the drawings and the pegs within there and they... They get quite overwhelming, I think, if Adam does an example, yeah. You can just see yeah. the, the scroller bar. If you have to, say, rig a character using this, similar to, I think, Adobe Animate or maybe Adobe After Effects might do, it can quickly become very hectic, chaotic, and somewhat even more complicated than seeing this visual representation. So I think yeah. for, for any newcomer's advice I'd give them is just to practice and get used to just the interface in general it, it pays off in the end yeah no that's that's good that's a good tip because uh, often when i teach people this i'm often saying the same thing as you just said like get used to the environment so you because it's quite kind of overwhelming and there's a lot of buttons and things and you have to go through them all one at a time and hold your mouse over each one and be like i don't even know what that means so uh, and yes you're right the timeline is I'm pressing nine here. That's a shortcut to open all this up. It's um just it's rigging. disgusting with just yeah. how much that is. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts, isn't it? And mm. uh, people coming from other software think that's how you rig, but the the node view is just it's the timeline without time. It's everything in your project laid out. So it's this nice flow chart thing, which if you 
can get your logical brain in gear, it's uh, it's really nice to to work with. Just one thing I wanted to mention before we go any further, because people sometimes ask about the different versions. So Toon Boom has Essentials, Advanced, and Premium. And this is Premium that we're using. Premium has the node view. Now, nearly all animation studios that I know that use Toon Boom use Premium, um, because basically without the node view to create like a cutout rig and Toon Boom being used mainly for cutout animation, it's a lot harder. I guess what I wanted to ask you then was, is there anything that you are thinking, oh, this is gonna be a challenge next? Or um, are you pretty clear with the way forward what you're gonna do next on this? You've probably noticed that the, the head shape isn't actually accurate to the design that Sam Shaw gave me. It, he's got like yeah. this curved head. Now with this head, I've rigged the, the front profile of his face, which is quite flat. By the use of deformers, you can actually manipulate the head shape. So you can add in that curve. You can add in maybe some rotations, but it's very adaptable to what you could potentially rig the head to do. So if say if you add some mask controls, you could have this box with a little peg that you move around and then it moves the head around for you instead of the animator having to manually move the head itself so it, it just makes the animation process a lot easier and yeah. um, it helps out the animator take take everything i say with a pinch of salt but from what i've heard good riggers should also be somewhat good animators because they need to know what the rig needs to do each each rig will be different for the context or the show or whatever you're working on for this this is just a good little way for me to play around with toon boom get to grips with it the only problem that i've had with it i can't troubleshoot the patches on the arms so you probably notice yeah. on, on like the the elbow section there's these white things so if you if you click the arm there should be a deformer if you move the bottom bit where the hand is you'll probably notice the patch kind of doesn't doesn't quite do what you want it to do which is one of the things i haven't been able to fix just to go through a few of the things you said there so you're dead right to in my opinion to i think most people use this they will rig something um in a stock kind of most basic shape and then they'll deform into shapes like this now it depends a little bit on the rig so if you've got a real stylized character where you're not going to be tweening between things you know using deformers for example if there's going to be uh, i don't know there might be a shape like this that at some point you want to kind of tween it into this shape on kind of a blur frame like a twist of the head and then into another shape facing the other side and you're going to put a master controller on like you say so you've got an easy kind of like tweenable option that definitely would mean, yeah, use this method. Put a nice envelope deformer around it and allow yourself to have these, these options. You could potentially get away without these pieces. You could just have four points instead of, what have you got there, seven? So you could you could do that. The simpler option would be to just use drawing swaps, drawing substitutions that go through mm. these shapes. But you always have that thing then of you don't have as much flexibility. So you've got the head with its own peg. Now, sometimes this is useful if you just need to make minor adjustments. But most people just have it like this. Um, I'm probably going to have to move this back over here. Oh yeah, so it's messing everything up because I'm trying to do it on the fly. I would probably I'd probably end up deleting this and then just adjusting this back. But yeah. you would you would have to kind of like draw this back over here and set it up from the start because this kind of method of what you see here without the peg would just be a much easier way of visually clicking this and moving everything rather than having to go B right. B B. I mean, you can use visual little dots and handles and things that people can click to move around the whole head. So that's you know an option. It's just something that um, often appears in rigs. It's good to put pegs in so you've got the option, but you just got want to, want to be careful of putting them I in. Guess you don't need. You can always add too much of a good thing in a way. Yeah, I mean, generally it's it's good to give the options, but you just have to think: does this need it for everything? Like, how often is this going to be needed? Because if you really needed to move the head for a small adjustment, um, which I've found in animation sometimes, like when you're working on a TV series, I would maybe need to move the head piece on its own like this maybe a couple of times. It's not that often uh, because you tend to position the head first. So it would be quite niche, but I don't know. Um, it's If you wanted to keep this in and have ultimate flexibility, then you could just make a visual selector thing to move it. And I'll maybe talk about that. Maybe we'll cover that in another video. Awesome. The only thing I noticed here on the head that I wanted to solve for you was this. So you've got this like um, little, like the stitches going it's across. It's the stitch on his head, yeah. Yeah, so you see how, because the line is a textured line, um, if we click on it with the black selection arrow, basically you can see that sort of stroke is being added and the thickness of it is being added, that texture. So that's what's creating that weird, like slight overlap there is because of the fact that this line is kind of like a, got a bit of texture to it. 
I'll show you a thing where you can make it not show anyway. So let me just kind of keep that nice background on and just lock it. So one of the things, this is one of the things that I did notice that might be useful to you is if you want to, because I noticed in the drawing view, you've got it set up nicely. You have the, the line and the, the fill on the line and the color art layers. What we can do is we can use the art layer filters to use the color to cut this line. So I'll show you now. So what I'm going to do is uh, I want to use the color from the top head. So I'm gonna move my mouse over the node view and press return, because that's the, the quick search from Harmony 20 onwards. Hot, hot keys are just everything for efficiency, I found out. <laughs> yeah, you get, you get quick at it. So we're gonna use this color art here, and that's gonna filter out whatever goes into it. It filters out the color art layer, which I think you've already got, because you've got a couple of these in here. So you obviously know what this is. So I'm going to just pop this into the composite. I'm going to disconnect this one. Now it just shows you that's just bringing in the color art. So then so I'm going to no bring in the line art. Yeah. I'm just going to okay. bring in the line art and connect that up as well. I'm going to sandwich the line art on the top. So I want it to be left because I'm sure you know this, the stuff closest to the left, like the nearest this yellow mm -hmm. box is like the camera. So going left to right, it's going to go line art, the stuff that's being cut here, and then the color art. So at the moment, it doesn't look any different because we're still using all of the art layers to cut there. Yeah. But instead of mm -hmm. that, if we were to pull out from the color art and connect it to that, that cutter port. Now it removes, you see how it took away. Oh. So because it's only using the color art. So that's a way of filtering, but because oh, they get reconnected okay. there. So that's a nice way of, for example, here, you've got a similar situation. You know, if you do want to use a textured line, but you have a nice clean fill on the inside, that's a way of, of getting around that. So another thing is you mentioned about this arm here. I tried to hook the patches up to the lower arm with the kinematic output, but for some reason, I, I just couldn't get it to work. I don't know if I was doing it in, like incorrectly or if I hadn't hooked up quite correct. Now, we'll yeah. prob probably cover this in a different uh, different lesson because this is a little bit more, well, different chat. This is a little bit more mm. uh, of, a, of a new thing I'd probably recommend for this. You've done it right for this kind of setup here. Um, it's just one of those things that it basically, it's anchored from this point. And so this kind of like rudder, this uh, this handle is obviously moving it because it's further away from it. It's kind of like pushing it all over the place. Uh, so there is a there is another way of doing, I mean, there's always other ways of doing this. There would be ways of where you could break this arm down into a couple of pieces, like at the join and, and do something there. Obviously that's probably not going to be that useful because of the, the curve. You're going to spend a lot of time changing things, but I shall um, show you something on that in a future video. Generally, you know, this is looking really great. Thinking It looks cool. It's nice and neat, nice and organized. I looked at this down here, these um, these uh, notes now. I, was like, I, oh. I recently learned that you can literally add in little notes and then just type them in. Cause I used to, I used to use the backdrops to write in notes, but then every time you zoom in and out it, the text changes size. So it's, it was a, it was a nightmare to just read what you, you jotted down, so I've, I've now utilized the, the note node. Yeah, they're, they're really handy, yeah. I mean, uh, I think the notes are good if you're writing a bit more, you know, a bit more information, so definitely that's a good thing. Was there anything that you wanted to ask or um, chat about next? I guess whilst we're still on the rig, um, I was going to ask the the stripy top I've used, similar to the hair, the, the freeform deformers. Is that a convenient way of, of utilising it? Because obviously you've, you've got the texture of the, the stripes and stuff. So if you use a regular envelope deformer, it kind of warps the image. So yeah, yeah. I thought I'd try something new. But say, say if... Um, Say if the character wants to rotate, can you still utilize the freeform deformers to, to move it to each rotation? If that makes sense? I, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a good stab at explaining it. I think this is one of the problems with learning new software is you kind of need to know the exact terminology for the software before you can fully ask like specific mm. questions. You know, if you're on a forum or you're trying to find an answer on the internet, it's like the terminology is different. So you're like, I kind of want to do this thing, but I don't know what it's called. Uh, I, I get a lot of questions from people who are coming from cell action to Toon Boom and they, they use the term display order because it's a term from cell action, which does 
doesn't exist in Toonby. <laughs> so it's it's like I'm like yeah, it's called Z depth or, or ordering in Z depth, you know, whatever else. But th there's no way where if you search for display order, um, I, I guess it makes sense. But it's just it's one of those things. So I'm really glad you brought up this one though. The the t-shirt. Now this is a really interesting thing to talk about. Let me turn the deformers on. So you've used the freeform deformer, one of Toon Boom's new deformer uh, modes. And they brought this one in because it allows you to move, you know, textures and stuff around. It's really good for like, if you've got a PNG or a JPEG image, you can kind of like move that thing around. But as you found, it's a little bit unruly because it kind of, it's like um, a kid in a paddling pool that's like, doesn't want anybody else in. And as soon as somebody else steps in, it like pushes it and all the water goes over the side. <laughs> Weird analogy I've come up with there, but. Uh, but yeah, it's just not ideal. It's like, you see how, it reminds me of the pin puppet tool in After Effects, but when you pull down here and it's pushing stuff up, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's, it can be a little bit difficult to work with. So you tend to need, I find when you're rigging another uh, mass around it to kind of contain the thing, because it just gets wild. So I'm going to show you a different method. Um, what we're going to talk briefly about i'm just going to solo out this layer so um so that's that little solo button here uh i pressed the letter o to jump to it in the timeline to find it so i'm going to put um, a quick envelope deformer on this because ideally the envelope deformer would be the perfect option but as you found it is a bit i find with a lot of the things when especially when it comes to rigging it is legitimate just trial and error until you find either something that works for you or something that is a makeshift alternative to to what you want to achieve and this is one of those scenarios where there's there is there's an alternative again that the free form the format but it doesn't quite hit the nail on the head there's there's still a few problems with it and, this, and you probably find with the envelope to form that that will have its own problems as well exactly yeah so you chuck in an envelope deformer and you think this is perfect and then you're like oh yeah <laughs> so much worse. yeah um so you kind of want that to work with mm. you know everybody in toon boom who used this at one point has tried this out and gone oh why why and so what you tend to do is you create the white fill and then you'd create the stripes and they'd get cut by the fill of the white and it would allow you to then modify the stripes oh, and modify okay. the thing and that works for a lot of things but as of last year toon boom introduced a new thing that's called the weighted deformer and it's it's like a magic thing i'm going to show you it now oh. so i'm just going to hit return okay. and type in weighted deform i remember i was watching i think some some youtube was like playing around with the the new harmony 20 and i don't i don't know if there's the way to form but there was a way he managed to combine two separate deformers onto one drawing which completely blew my mind i'll not sure if it was the way to deform or not. I, so I that's remember. the one. That's <laughs> the one I was going to suggest for the arm as to try out. Uh, oh, there are a okay. few. Yeah, there are a few kind of uh, caveats. There's a few kind of um, restrictions there. A few mm. things that you need to kind of be aware of. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this up to here, uh, the peg up to there, and then we're going to connect this down to here. And we're going to connect the deformer. It's a bit of a like a mystery connection oh. because it doesn't tell you it's going to connect it, until it you actually. It kind of pops out of nowhere, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow. So there's no port to tell you, but there's. It even tells you if you click on the port deformation and then parent mm. transformation. So peg into here, deformer into here. So you just add it in, connect it up, and then reconnect it to the drawing. Now it looks exactly the same, but now as we move this thing around, it's oh, working. Wow just how you would expect the thing to work in the first place and as you move it you can kind of feel it's weird you can kind of feel a weight to the deforming um it, it feels like it's got like a heavy blanket over the top you know so it's that's is that's that the, the same deformer you use for hair as well or is that a different one because i know I, I think you can apply the weighted form to say if you've got hair that has its own gravity in a, in a weird sense yeah, you I'm could, sure. well, so you could <laughs> apply this to hair. You could also use, if you're looking for an automated system, like, I don't know, something to delay, then maybe you would use, there's like a dynamic spring, which, you know, like, can oh, that might be it. Do. Yeah, that sounds but, familiar as well. But it, I find that a bit weird to use as an animator because you're kind of relying on the software guessing on how fast mm -hmm. you know the velocity of a peg is above it um so this is kind of a nice thing so that was what i was going to suggest to you on on the t-shirt okay well thank you that's 
that is that's quite a magical tool i can say it is i had a, a moment of like revelation when i discovered this in <laughs> like 20 when i opened it up and i was like oh nice this is cool mm -hmm. this is what we're after so this is a handy new new tool um obviously with all these kind of like little gadgets and gizmos you have to be careful how much you use them because toon boom mm -hmm. um you know is not an infinite resource software package so uh, i know computers are getting more powerful and things but um if you do overuse them then it does it's stop quite heavy slow. on the computer mm. yeah but this isn't too bad it's, it's pretty good the thing is that always confused me because it, it looks like it should be on top of a peg it's, it's got the green uh squares on it so again i'm totally with you when i first started to use it and i was kind of like connecting this i was like where do i put it like it's there's no port and then it just bing it just appears so really really random thing with this rig as well you can adjust the socks length <laughs> which i oh. find quite amusing you can you can literally just drag drag them up and um oh not, oh, not yeah. drag, sorry, oh, move, move the yeah you can just make them higher i thought it's quite an amusing thing to do so it's like uh, football mode it's, and then, and then ca casual cas sport. Casual, yeah. <laughs> Nerdy jock mode. Quite, mm. nice. I like it. <laughs> yeah, there's there's always a alternative way of rigging. I, I think from what I found, there's no right or wrong way of rigging. There's just some things are more convenient than others. So you could, you could have an overly complicated rig. It could be amazing. But if it destroys your computer, then it's not very useful. Yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes yeah. you can have a simple one that just gets the job done. Again, it's, it's all down to context. What Say if you're working with a client or studio, it's all to what they need the character to do. Yeah, you've hit the nail on the head with that. It's, it's, it's definitely... As a rigger, you are sandwiched between um, production design and animation, like production, and you are like the ultimate plate spinner. You know, you've got to keep mm -hmm. the the animators happy. You've got to keep the designers happy. You've got to keep the producers happy, like the people with the doling out the cash in terms of like production spend. So, if you create a rig mm -hmm. that's super slow to work with and um, it's really heavy. But like the designers are super happy with it, but the animators are furious because they can't move it quick enough because it's slowing mm. down their computers. It, it's it's a it's a tricky task, and I think it's quite a creative thing to do. I I don't know if you. Feel it is. Like... It definitely is. I find with the limitations of rigging, you can explore and develop new ways of pursuing different ways of storytelling or character movement. It, it is it is extremely creative with what you can do. I sometimes feel like that when working on new projects. So say say with the Frankenstein rig, when I was working on it, I discovered I was I was watching some tutorial on YouTube and I discovered a new technique and I was like, oh, I want to try it, but it couldn't be applied to my rig. So it's it's just there in the back of your mind thinking, I want to use it. How can I somehow mash this technique into this rig? The most suitable way is just to wait and then start a new project because you can't you can't just forcefully add things that are unnecessary or don't work with your rig yeah and i think that is you're, you're saying all the the rigging philosophy that somebody wants to hear it's it's you don't want to shoehorn in some function because you think it's cool it needs to suit the rig so it's a good a good thing to uh, to think about i feel a lot especially with a lot of newcomers to rigging that it's it's such a terrifying feat to do because uh, for, for me when i first started i was like all right i'm gonna do a full character rig i skipped the whole i'll oh, do an arm or do an eye I, I went full character and you, you're basically setting yourself up for failure because you don't know everything you're not too familiar with the interface and it's it's not a process you can rush i guess you, yeah. you've got to spend in the hours and the time developing skills knowing uh, hotkeys just increase efficiency you can do things so much quicker and it's the same with the nodes so you've got the cutter node the, there's the line art and the color art there, there's all these things that you need time to develop and understand but the more hours you put in the more output you get i guess yeah you get out what you put in as they always say which mm, is everybody wants a same. shortcut yeah but there aren't any really let's be honest mm. in life it's like if you want to do <laughs> you have to be smart about it i mean there's definitely shortcuts and time savers in rigging that's why 2d rigging exists it's it saves you drawing every frame but to get to a decent level of understanding you've got to put the work in definitely definitely so as adam said at the start of the video this is kind of a new thing on his channel now we have no idea if you guys actually want to see this type of content or not if you do don't or have any other suggestions please let us know in the comment section as these videos do take quite a bit of time to make any and all feedback would be greatly appreciated if you do want to learn more about toon boom harmony then go ahead and check out adam's animation academy 
There'll be a link to it in the description below. I mean, Adam has been working in the animation industry for at least 12 years, so I think it's safe to say that he knows what he's talking about. So yeah, thanks for watching.